Your younger years, a time to learn, a time to grow, a time to make mistakes, and a time to learn from them. But they're also a time for parents to parent and protect you when they can. Take the use of synthetic drugs. A lot of teens and young adults may think they're safer than illicit drugs because they may contain the word natural on their labels. But thing is, most times they're just plain dangerous. As a matter of fact, right now all 50 states have banned two types of synthetic drugs or cannabinoids called spice or K2, as well as cathinones or bath salts. But manufacturers have been working hard to try to find loopholes in state laws. Spice is more commonly used by younger people from teenagers to mid-twenties. It's made with various chemicals like rat poison and insecticides, and it's more expensive than marijuana. Still, some emergency officials say its use is increasing, calling it a significant problem right now. Take a look at these synthetic drug packets. Brands like Mr. Big Shot, Geeked Up, Extreme, and Red Giant are circulating, and these substances are getting in the hands of many. People who ingest these products are seeing some dangerous and life-threatening effects. The real concern is we really don't know what is actually in those products. Clinical toxicologist Gina Marafa with the Poison Control Center says they've received many calls from healthcare facilities since April 1st, and the number keeps changing. Ambulance crews are responding to calls near homeless shelters where people are using and abusing. The patients that we've been treating are suffering from acute delirium. They they're, have no cognitive ability. They're, they're completely out of control. They're extremely aggressive uh, with EMS. They don't have any control over what they're doing. This spike of synthetic drugs is forcing first responders to change their protocols and increase their chemical sedation dosage. That way those violent patients won't put crew members in harm's way. It's certainly very tense. We've had crew members that have been assaulted by some of these patients. Uh, they, they change so quickly from being sedate and calm to aggressive and violent. It's very worrisome and we're, we're really trying to get to the bottom of, you know, what happened, what changed, um, and really the, the overall public health concern of really trying to let people know how dangerous these substances really indeed are. Now, Spice is sold under a variety of names, including K2, Fake Weed, Yucatan Fire, Skunk, Moon Rocks, a bunch of others. It's even often labeled not for human consumption. Other Spice products are sold as incense, but more closely resemble potpourri. Now, as for medical effects, Spice users report experiences similar to those of marijuana, like elevated mood, relaxation, altered perception. Those who have abused it report rapid heart rate, vomiting, agitation, confusion, and hallucinations. It can also raise blood pressure and reduce blood supply to the heart, and it's been associated with heart attacks. Another debate when it comes to drugs is legalizing medical marijuana. Now, right now, it is legal in Delaware and is getting closer to being sold after the House passed a bill updating the regulations making it mandatory for medical professionals with medical marijuana experience as well as qualified medical marijuana users to be on the committee. It also authorizes the State Bureau of Investigations to speed up the process of background checks for employees of the state-designated dispensary. The dispensary, or Compassion Center, is set to open officially this June. In Maryland, there is a Maryland Medical Marijuana Commission led by a woman by the name of Natalie M. LaPrade. She has been tasked with developing regulations for patient registry and identification cards, dispensary licensing, setting fees, and possession limits and more. And in Virginia, currently the law allows the use of medical marijuana only for treatment of cancer and glaucoma, but use for childhood seizures is getting closer to approval. So we know about use and the talks to make it available to help ailing humans. But what about for our animals? With just a click, dog and cat owners can now purchase capsules, biscuits, and other cannabis edibles as a natural pain reliever and anti-inflammatory supplement. The purchase and use of these products is legal in the U.S., including Texas, because they contain such a low percentage of THC and are not intended for human consumption. Therefore, it meets the definition of hemp supplements under U.S. federal law. Veterinarian Dr. Merton Pearson tells us although there is a possibility these products are beneficial, it has not been proven. The problem is, right now, the research hasn't been done. We don't know what works, what doesn't, what are the proper 
extracts out of that, that or the chemicals out of the cannabinoids that will actually work and which ones aren't. A quick internet search provides information for dozens of pet cannabis vendors. Lauren Hokums is a pet owner and says she understands the concerns with the accessibility of the products. I have a three-year-old at home and I understand that because she's gotten in my dog treats before and has eaten them. So I do understand that and I don't think, I mean, unless you have them seriously locked up, then, you know, any kid's going to find a way to get to them. I don't feel like that's safe at all. Dr. Pearson says his biggest concern is pets being used as guinea pigs. I, I'm just not comfortable having somebody say, well, yeah, let's throw it out there and hope for the best and we're going to use your pets as our experimental animals and see what works. Even in states where marijuana is legal, veterinarians do not have the power to prescribe cannabis products to pets, just recommend them. The FDA is currently investigating the safety and benefits of the products. You know, a lot of people face adversities in life, some of us more than others, but it's how you attack and overcome those obstacles that matters the most. Coming up next, we're going to hear the story of one young man who's living with cerebral palsy, how his talent in sports is anything but ordinary, and why he's planning to go all the way without backing down. Plus, are you intimidated by your grill? What about your smoker? Later, we get some tips on how to have that perfect fall off the bone barbecue without all those down home cooking calories. We'll be right back. 